Alright, so we're going to go through the process of creating our first official print. I'm going to skip the test print, but when I get over to the printer, I'll show you how to do that if that's something you're interested in. So we are going to be using what was included with the printer, which is basically this uh, micro SD to USB adapter. So you'll put your micro SD card in here. Go ahead and plug that into your computer. The only software that you're actually going to need to download is going to be your splicing software. So in this case, we're just going to be using Ultimaker Cura because it's free. So you can head over, you can uh, look up Ultimaker, make sure you're going to the correct website. You can go to the download page, get it downloaded, which I have already done. And then we're going to use a couple of different resources. Now I'm going to be printing out the Codeless Fix logo. I'm not going to be trying to make anything, you know, super special or fancy or anything. So we're going to use a couple of different websites. First up is tinkercad.com. And then we will also, if you're interested, be using online-convert.com. I did find both of these from this YouTube video by Chaos Core Tech. It's how to turn 2D images into 3D objects, Tinkercad tutorial. So you can feel free to check that out if you're interested. But another one that I'm going to be using, which I would highly recommend, is Vector.com. It's V-E-C-T-R.com. All of these, except for Cura, are going to be free online utilities that you can use. So Vector.com allows you to build these 3D vector files. So you'll see that I have mine here. You can highlight everything. It's pretty simple. And I have another video on this if you want. You can check it out on my channel. But you can see all the different parts, group them, ungroup them, resize, change colors. I noticed that when I was importing this into Tinkercad that if it's not all a similar color, there are certain pieces that it ignores, like, for example, if it's light gray or white. So I had to change some colors here. So basically what I did was I took an existing SVG file that I had of this image. If you want, you can draw yours or convert them. So it's up to you. If you want to work with your SVG file here, you can. But the other option is to take your PNG and you can go to online convert. Uh, so basically online-convert.com, just make sure you find the right website. And then you can convert to SVG. So basically you'll drop in your image file here, click start, and then you'll be able to download the SVG file, which is basically what you're going to be using and editing over in Tinkercad. In this case, I put this PNG file, which is what I downloaded from vector.com. So I took one that I already had and just downloaded it as a PNG. And then I dropped it in here and converted it to an SVG. It seemed like it came out a little bit better. And that SVG is right here. So from there, what you do is you can go over to tinkercad.com, sign up for your free account. And in the top corner, you can click import and choose a file. And in this case, you would basically just be able to choose your uh, whatever file you're interested in. So in this case, I'll go to downloads. We'll choose the SVG file and click import. And I'll zoom out a bit so we can see when it's imported. Now you'll see it comes in fairly large here, but you can drag it around and you can resize it. And really all that I've done to this file is gone to this plane using the right, uh, the right mouse button, which is what navigates around. The mouse wheel scrolls in and out the left button selects. So you can resize it, make it thicker or not. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. And so basically I laid it down flat on this plane here, as you can see. And then I made it just a little bit thicker. And then you can click export. And in this case, I saved it as, I think I saved it as an STL file. Now that you have done that, you'll see that we have the file saved right here. So when you double click it, it'll open it in Cura. So I wanted to give a really quick overview of what exactly we did. You're going to want your image to be in an SVG file, not just some random PNG. So what you can do is you can use vector.com to draw your vector image, or you can use online-convert to convert your PNG to an SVG file. If you need to make edits, you can do so in vector but you can take your SVG file and import it directly into Tinkercad, edit it, 
make it 3D by increasing thickness, making any other adjustments if you want to round edges and make it look more appealing. Also changing colors, I believe you should be able to do that in Tinkercad as well. So that's really all that there is to that. Once you do that, you export it and you set the correct file type. The first time you open up Cura, it's gonna ask you what type of printer you have. So it's pretty straightforward. You just select the type of printer and then you'll save those settings. And then in the future, when you double click to open a Cura file, it'll automatically bring that printer up and you'll see we have this file right here. Just like in Tinkercad, you can hold the right mouse button to move it around. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and then the left button to select. So we have it set up, it's placing it right in the center, which is where we would want it. Now you can go ahead and plug in your flash drive that has the micro SD card and click the slice button down at the bottom right. When this is done, it should save it to your flash drive. Make sure that you can find the file and name it something that you're not going to forget. That way when you go to the printer, it'll be easy and straightforward. So now that we have that, let's jump over to the printer and get this print started. All right, so now that we have the micro SD card inserted over here, then we turned on the machine. I went ahead and leveled the bed. I'll have another video about that in the description. So in this case, we have a glass bed. There are tons of different people that have different recommendations for bed adhesion and all that stuff. Really, I'm just gonna wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol. So basically, we will just put a little bit on a paper towel since I did a print uh, earlier, which was a different test and just going to wipe this down pretty straightforward get rid of any other plastics that may have already been on there i've heard some people recommend that you do uh, the first time you clean with rubbing alcohol and then from then on something like soap and water um, it's entirely up to you but we'll just kind of leave that there so now that that's been cleaned very very lightly what we'll do is on this side, we're going to go down to the preheat option and select that. So this will start heating everything up, like the bed, the nozzle, everything else. We'll make sure that all the parts are clipped in. And at this point, you will pretty much just wait for that preheating to begin. You can check your temperatures. We'll see them down here. For example, we're preheating to 200 degrees. I'm using default settings for everything just to make this very quick and straightforward. So you'll see that it's preheating, temperatures are rising pretty quickly. You should be able to feel this heating up. Again, you don't want to touch most of these parts. They do get very, very hot, but you should at least notice that. So you'll see the temperature rising on the bed. And if you want, you can go back to your main menu. So if we go up here, I'll try to zoom in just a bit. So you can always go back and in your control panel, you have the ability to change temperature. So you'll see nozzle temperature and bed temperature. You can edit those if you're interested. I'm not sure if that will change the fact that the preheat's going. It doesn't look like it because right here we have our temperature steadily climbing to 200. So basically that's when the bed will be preheated and ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll wait for that temperature to get there, and then we will zoom back out and try to begin the print process. And you'll hear the fans and everything else going. Now, while you're doing this, one important thing to note, you're going to want to make sure that this thing is placed on a very sturdy table. Uh, you don't want it to be something that can get bumped. It's a very, very sensitive, as you can tell by the actual process of leveling the bed. So you want it on a sturdy table in an area that may not be super, super dusty or anything like that. And then uh, I don't know too much about the plastic filaments, so you're probably going to want to make sure that you're focusing on something that uh, when you're doing the that process and getting everything taken care of, you're going to want to focus on making sure that you know, you're in a well-ventilated area as well. Now, one other thing that I did not mention, which I'll take the camera off the tripod for this, I did not mention how to get the filament added. It's a pretty simple process. So this is the filament that came with it. So I just hooked it on this top piece here. You will cut this at a 45 degree angle. There's other videos online on how to load this. But when you go back to the Ender 3, you'll see in here, there's a little black clip or spring loaded piece. So when you put this wheel on, you'll notice that this filament feeds straight into this hole right here. 
It was a pain to load the first time because if we take this piece off, you'll see in there, this has to feed straight through into this tube. Now, in my case, I had an issue where it was feeding it in an angle, which is why you push this clamp. It separates these two pieces and allows you to feed straight into that tube. And then once you do that, you can either hold that spring or rotate this blue piece and it'll start feeding it slowly through. You want to do this when it's preheated. That way, as you are loading, for example, we'll do it right here. As you're loading, you want to be able to see the filament come out, which you can see as I'm rotating this blue wheel, that filament is slowly coming out, which is what you want to see. That means that everything's preheated, filament's loading correctly, and with most prints, it's going to print a little bit off to the side to kind of clear things out. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go over here and everything looks like it's heated up correctly. So we're gonna click print and you'll see we have this top one, which is our file. And this bottom one is the cat that I printed yesterday, which is actually right there. So if you're interested in printing the test file and you don't wanna download anything, you can actually just click here and it'll start that print. But let's go with the file that we just made. And you'll see it says that it's loading. And again, this is the file that came from Kira. Now you'll see it starts to zero itself out. So we'll back up just a bit and basically just let it do its thing. And again, it'll start over here and you'll see that it's going to start printing out a little bit of filament just to make sure that things are kind of cleared out and that it doesn't have any issues, you know, getting clogged or anything like that. So right here, because this is a relatively simple print, I think I have enough filament for it, but basically it'll tell you everything you need to know right here. So it'll tell you your printing time remaining. And as you can see, we're getting our little outline right here. And if I'm not mistaken, usually what you're printing is going to fall within that outline. So this is the point where you wanna pay very close attention. You'll be able to see how well your actual process of leveling the bed works. If you start seeing any of these lines experience any issues, for example, as this is going around the line peeling up or just anything odd, that's where you would want to stop the print, make sure you're leveled the bed correctly and adjusted and you know corrected for any potential issues. But at this point, we have our print going and I'll go ahead, I'll stop the video in a moment because that's really everything I wanted to cover here. But for this particular item, which was again, what came with the printer, it was really the only file that was on there that could be printed. I followed this exact same process, except instead of clicking on the Cura file that I made a minute ago, I clicked on this, which it did this exact same process. You have this line over here, it does the outline, and then it starts printing and gives you a general overview of over here, how long it's taking, how much time's left. So it's the exact same process. So overall, I hope this video has been helpful and I do wanna show that you can already see the outline. Uh, looks like we're having a little bit of an issue over here, but I guess I'll just let it run and kind of see how it comes out and then we'll go from there. Now I did wanna do a really quick update because the first layer did not come out very well. So I ended up scraping that off and starting over. So it's usually pretty good, especially in the earlier stages when you're just learning, to make sure that when you're doing these prints that you're not leaving it unattended really ever because these do get very, very hot, but also that you're making sure that that first couple of layers is going down correctly. In the case of mine, you can see that it wasn't coming out as clean, so I just used the included scraper and just very carefully scraped off the bed, shut everything down, cleaned it really well, leveled it once more, and started the exact same print using the exact same process. And you can see this one is coming out much cleaner. You see it matches what we had on the computer screen not too long ago. So everything seems to be working this time around. So again, hope this is helpful.